Hi, I'm Hannah from Hoodles, and I finally finished my Pride doll. Since it's Pride Month and I live too far from any celebrations, I took it out on this project, lots of colors and glitters. I debated whether I should name this video That's Gay or The Dollar Bean, but you know, I went basic, sorry about that. I feel like I missed the opportunity though. Anyway, this project is very personal for me and I'm so glad it turned out as good as it did. With that being said, this is not a series, but a little side quest. So I won't make another Pride doll until next year. Does that make it a series? I, I don't think that makes it a series. Oh well, this doll is not a character. I think of her more like a 3D version of the lesbian flag with the orange, white and purple. And Torale was perfect for this. I had it in a separate box for dolls to sell because I have a hard time with the orange color. It's so vibrant, which, you know, it's cool, but I always have trouble with the face up. I think she's the first doll I repainted and made a YouTube video of though. It would be nice to watch that one and see how I've progressed since then, but I just can't. Not yet. Scaredy cat. Back to narrating whatever I'm doing here. I'm taking out the rest of the hair and glue from inside the head, then I used acetone to remove her stripes and face up. It works like a charm on the arms and head, but the acetone melts the plastic when you get to the legs. I work light and fast, but it turns shiny. The shine is easily removed with some fine-grained sandpaper though. Use a mask if you do this, plastic particles do not belong in your lungs. I removed the ears and sprayed the head with Mr. Super Clear before I started on the face up. As usual, when it comes to Torelay, I had a hard time getting it opaque, so I did it a little bit differently. She got some pastel blush with red and some blue, then I drew the pupils and questioned my life choices. She looks insane at this point. Right, I used pastels inside the iris before using my watercolor pencil. This helps a lot with the no opaque color problem. Problem, I can't pronounce that. Anyway, she got strands on her eyebrows, freckles and shading inside the eyes before the third layer. I worked on lashes and highlights, but realized the face-up looked flat and boring. I missed the pink blush, so I airbrushed with light pink on her cheeks, lips, chin and forehead before the fourth layer. Looked super cute. Then I worked more on the color. Here I'm painting freckles with watered down white acrylics. It was my first time trying this and I was so happy about the result. White strands for the eyebrows, black lashes underneath, some shading underneath the eyes and then some beauty marks with a dotting tool. Finally the last layer and I used a light blue for the lashes. I also decided on some heart shaped eye shines. Added some white dots because you know why not, then I finalized it with some glitter glue in orange and pink. I don't know why I didn't show it properly, sorry about that. These are nail art sticker things and I use them from time to time as tattoos for my dolls and this one needed some rainbow hearts and unicorns. So I cut them out, soaked them in water and placed them on the doll. Rather cute. They're easy to move around as long as there's water. Then I put on a coat of clear nail polish which melts the plastic around it a little bit. Then I blush the body before spraying with Mr. Super Clear. The blush will mostly be hidden beneath clothes but anyway. I make three incisions inside the neck hole and put the head back on. I'm always nervous the face up will crack, but so far so good. Then I added more white acrylic freckles to the body. Look at this. I love it. Next is hair. It's been a while since I made some old fashioned yarn wefts, so I decided on some bright orange acrylic yarn. Boy, I've missed making this. It's so satisfying and simple. When I'm out of ideas and have a creative drought, I sometimes make yarn wefts just for the therapy. This time I wanted to make them ombre with a darker shade of orange at the roots, which I did with my airbrush after the wefts had dried. I peeled them off and airbrushed underneath too before leaving them to dry for a few days. I'm not 100% in love with this airbrush paint, but it does what it's supposed to do. I cut the excess and glue first the bangs, then the rest of the head. I'm not a hairdresser, but I did my best. I glued the final weft the wrong way, flipped it over after drying and did the same thing on the other side and in the end I set the parting with my iron. Oh right, I did this while the glue dried. I had a plan which didn't work, so I looked up wolf cut on YouTube and ended up with this. Beautiful. I used an eyebrow razor to cut the hair on both ponytails. I'll admit I was nervous, but I trusted the YouTube video. 
I did some brushing and final touches and the hairdo was finished and it looked cool. It totally looks like a lion's mane which inspired me to give the tail some fur too. It wasn't planned. I sanded the end of the tail to give the glue something to stick to then I glued wefts onto it. I decided to keep it long, it was so soft. Next is clothes. I bought some fabrics because I didn't have the right shade of purple and orange. This one was so cute and it's so soft too. Then I used Moonlight Jewel's Lolita dress pattern. So many pieces. But the instructions are so easy to follow. I made the top part of the dress out of dark and light orange. I decided early on that I would base her on the orange-pink flag since it seems to be the most inclusive one at the moment. It might change in the future and in that case this video is made in 2022, you know? Things change, which is not always a bad thing. I want people to be happy and feel like they're welcome. The meaning of the colors changes depending on which site you're reading. It's not like we have citizenship in LGBTQ land and have voted on our nation's flag. There is a lot of, you know, this was made and published on Tumblr and many use it. Which, you know, it's fine. I like the color scheme and what they represent. Dark orange, light orange, white, light purple and dark purple. It's so pretty. I used fabric glue to prevent the edges from fraying, then I let it dry before turning it right side out. The base is finished and I can start adding the fun stuff. I used a lot of glitter glue and some nail art studs. This is my favorite part of customizing. I also made a little bow, sewed it on and gave it a little gold star. Then I dressed her, reattached her arms and added even more glitter glue. Right, I had this fruit fly art sticker on my nail because I like insects and that's it. I had this red plastic sheet left after it's exchanging, that's also a hard word to say, <laughs> my phone battery. So I used a heart shaped hole punch, melted tiny holes in them, made some small hoops and then added them to the dress. Then I used the same hole punch and punched two hearts out of clear plastic. Following that I drew with a permanent marker around the hearts. I made a pair of glasses out of this. I cut it out carefully and saddened some of the rough edges a little bit. Then I used UV nail polish to make the frame a bit 3D. I couldn't make it too thick or it wouldn't have cured under the UV lamp. This is actually from a cheap kit I got from Wish. I wouldn't put it on my nails uh, but using it in craft that's okay. To remove the stickiness I rubbed it off with some acetone then gave it another coat with red glitter polish. Finally I added red tinted glass or you know plastic. I ended up adding some tiny beads then they were done. The tail got a ribbon with a purple bell. You can't hear it in photos obviously but the sound is lovely when you move her around so it's still worth it. Oh, and more glitter glue. Then she needed a bag. I painted a flag on leather and I made the triangle the lid. It took a couple of coats for it to cover and yeah, here are the pieces. I used self adhesive plastic, used another hole punch to make a heart and stuck it to the flags to give them some glitter hearts. Then I realized I did it the wrong side of the flag and I had to remove, repaint and redo it, which was fine. When removing the plastic, the glitter glue got a little bit mixed, but I saved it with a toothpick. Then I left it to dry completely before painting it with Liquitex gloss varnish. While that dries I stitched the back and sides using blanket stitching. Then I painted the stitches, added glitter glue and finally decided that the brown color did not work with the doll. So I tried painting it white, still wasn't satisfied and finally glued far fur on it instead. I sewed a chain onto the side and made an S hook. She won't run around and I wanted a neat solution for the clasp. It sagged and didn't look happy so I made a cardboard skeleton for it. Finally it was finished. A bit overdimensioned but super cute. It fits her. I made her some bracelets and rings using beads and wire, of course, orange, white and pink. Five fingernails, five colors, looked perfect. Some Tamiya gloss varnish later and the details on her outfit was finished. I moved on to shoes using these that come from an iris clops which is weird because I don't have the doll. I rubbed off the paint with acetone and airbrushed them white. Then I painted the bows rainbow colored, let that dry and added glitter glue to them. I should have sealed the white paint first because it wanted to dissolve and it was really tricky to work with but I managed. The buckles got some gold paint, the white got some pastel blushing to make them look less plastic. Then I sprayed with Mr. Super Clear and glossed the bows with Tamiya gloss varnish. Perfect!
This was a bit of a spur of the moment. I had seen something similar on a human and I wanted to make a heart crown for her. So I twisted some wires, leaving strands sticking out from them, then curled the strands with a brush handle. It kind of reminded me of those wire bonsai trees, they're so cool. I have this tiny heart hole punch and punched some hearts from a cardboard. Then I glued the hearts on the ends of the strands before painting them red. They were so tiny. It took two coats. I was thinking of adding more glitter, but I thought it looked good without. Final fitting and voila. Finally, it's time for the stand. I love this resin. It doesn't smell that bad, it doesn't turn sticky, and it's easy to remove bubbles. I mixed the two parts equally and portioned them into six cups. I tried making a rainbow flag, but I guess I should have waited longer so the resin wasn't as liquid, it flowed around and then I made a mistake thinking it would look cool to mix it around a little bit. Uh, I just covered it with glitter. After it had cured, I drilled a hole for the wire and super glued it there. Then I demolded and added another layer of resin. It didn't look that bad underneath, to be honest. I added some gold hearts, just for fun. And there we go, so shiny, I love it. I sanded and glued my logo on the bottom of the stand. Then I glued some yellow-orange prisms at the bottom, like feet. Finally, I bent the wire into a saddle shape. It takes a couple of tries until one gets it right. I'm still saving up for a 3D printer to make them in clear plastic, hence more stable, but this is working so far. I was worried I wouldn't post this video in time, but here we are, she's finished and I'm rather sad about it, to be honest. It was like a really good book and now I feel, you know, what will I do with the rest of my life? Thankfully I've got too many ideas and too little time anyways, so it's going to be fine. Plus I've started on my summer vacation and after hibernating for a week I'll have enough energy for a lot of crafting. Bring it on! So this is what I started with and this is the result! Happy Pride everyone, I hope you enjoyed watching the process, until next time, bye!